Oh, here we go. Once again, once again, once again. Here we go. So drop the intro, please. <laughs> intro, drop it. Hi, I'm Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. Go in and do a raid at someone's house, but you don't have an arrest warrant. Let's get to it. This is the image they want to show you, ladies and gentlemen. This is what they want. This is what they're working towards. This is what they want to show you. you they want this to be the reality so bad. They want to make this happen for you. They have milked this situation all the way and finessed it to get to this point. Remember, I told you, they screwed LSU. I saw that early on. But LSU still had a chance to win the game. So neither that, say the last, they did a terrible job defending Caitlin, and that was it. But I saw what I saw. And they was like, oh, you just mad because Caitlin Clark tore her up. Could care less. <clears throat> I'm a fan of basketball. Kaylin Clark can play. Never said she couldn't. Never said she sucked. I'm not a real Iowa fan. I'm not a real fan of LSU. I like basketball. So it's like, like, hey, I'm pulling for this team against this team. I wasn't rooting or leaning anyway. I'm watching the game. Everybody, man, this is good for the storyline. What's wrong if she does win? I don't care if she wins. <laughs> I care about it being fair. I don't want to see you set a storyline and then you determine the factors leading all the way to the championship. I don't want to see that. We've seen that with Patrick Mahomes. We've seen that with every team that they've done when they carry them all the way there to fit their agenda. I don't like agendas, okay? I'm a sports guy. So when you're a sports guy, you want to see the sports play out the way it is. I want the sports to play out all the way, just the way it's designed. Let the game dictate who wins and loses. That's what it's supposed to be about. And for years, we've seen our sports marred, history marred. There's no way, once UConn made the adjustment in that game, when they were down 12, and I saw a switch hit, and defensively, they made a change. And they started getting back in the game. They got real aggressive on the point guard. They got real aggressive on the two guards. And the turnovers started happening. And once they started getting the turnovers and getting fast breaks and moving the ball on Iowa, they were lost. Iowa was confused. Their interior was being exposed. And as they came back, the inside-outside game was great. UConn was killing them with the extra pass. They didn't not they didn't understand who was supposed to guard who on switches. See, LSU was so one-on-one -on -one ball dominant. And you knew who was getting the ball. Here you assumed, oh, Paige's gonna get the ball. That's not gonna happen. That's not guaranteed that she's gonna get the ball. That she's gonna be the one to shoot it. Great game. Ruined by a bad call. 
And now everyone is calling for an investigation into this. Well, the fans are. There's not going to, the NCAA is not going to investigate themselves for a bad call. They're just going to say bad call or they're not going to say it at all. And this Caitlin Clark is great. She's amazing. And look, they're on their way to the finals. What an amazing game. They're going to act like it didn't happen. They're going to talk about it for a day and then it's going to go off into, all right, well, we're here now. South Carolina versus it. It's gone. It's over. So now, yes, did they get screwed? They definitely got screwed. UConn got screwed out of the opportunity to win the game. Who says they're going to even hit the shot and score? The NCAA decided not to find out and advance Iowa to the championship game. UConn versus the South Carolina just don't hit when they've been marketing this Caitlin Clark and her last chance to to get a championship. She needs to at least make it to the game. So she's playing in her first championship, right? This is her last chance. Now she can do it. Now she beat South Carolina last year and she scored 41 points. I doubt this team is going to allow that. As defensively, they got up on Caitlin. They didn't give her any space to do the things that she wanted to do. She had a bad shooting night. She was um, greatly defended. People were get taken away her rhythm. She couldn't dribble herself into a rhythm of shooting. She was mostly doing a catch and shoot or shooting off a of pick and roll, and the shot just wasn't really there tonight. And they was like, man, we're waiting on Caitlin to erupt. Well, they took her out of the game. UConn made an adjustment and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to force the game out of her hands and force someone else to beat us. And this was, I'm telling you, that comeback from 12 down was something to see. Because they were down uh, first. They were jumped out ahead of uh, Iowa. And then you, it was looking like UConn was going to run them out the gym. Then Iowa came back by playing great basketball, by giving the ball to everyone else except for Caitlin Clark. And just using Caitlin basically as the decoy. And she was spreading the ball. And that's the thing about Caitlin Clark. She's very unselfish as a player. She knows how to distribute. She knows how to be a productive player on the court. So... You know, my hats go off to her because she's a baller. This has nothing to do with her. This has everything to do with the NCAA, who has definitely carried this woman and tried to make this Cinderella story come true. And it's she's going to the ball now. She's gotta she's gotta leave with the trophy and get the prince, right? So this is uh, yeah, so it's, it's a joke, but they, they're selling and marketing it to conservative white folks all around the globe. But let's see those conservative white folks now come out and say something about how they cheated the other white folks because they, they love to say that, right? I want to hear those conservative people call out this and what they did for Caitlin Clark. I, I don't see them saying that about how they cheated UConn out of the game. Let's see if they have that same smoke. Yo, what's up? Mm -mm -mm. Unbelievable. I see y'all out there. Hit the like button, man. Subscribe to the page. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for the cash app, too. I appreciate y'all. And I appreciate that you love the channel so much. Uh, Carcino is my name on the cash app. But let's get back to this because uh, this is their first conference, but they're talking. Were you about given an explanation uh, about the foul call and, and what was your view of it? No, I wasn't given an the explanation. There's no real time to get an explanation for it. 
uh, my point of view is pretty clean. And I feel bad for Edwards because she did everything right and they want to put it on the black woman. She sets a screen where she doesn't extend her shoulders. She doesn't move. She stands just like this. The screen hits her. She sets the screen. The girl runs into her. She didn't step out. She didn't do anything. Anything. Remotely close to they could call back. It's it's a bad call and a very horrible time of the game. Nine seconds was gone, was in the game. When they called that, it was like maybe six seconds to go in the game, or maybe even less. And you robbed what could have been. They could have missed the shot. And we wouldn't be having this conversation about somebody being carried. But it was not just that call. It was a lot of questionable things happening in that game um, that just didn't make sense to a lot of people. So with that being said, let's listen to some more. We'll go next to Jake on our right-hand side. Yep, you're right there. One, one up. Yeah, Jake Chotter from ESPN. For, for all the players, what did you make of, of the scream call from your, your vantage points on that play? Um, well, we just had a play. Um, I thought we were going to run it. Um, I thought we executed it well. We were going to get a shot off. The whistle blew. Um, I didn't see it. It was in the rear of me. I was just trying to come off the screen. Um, everybody can make a big deal of that one single play, but not one single play wins a basketball game or loses a basketball game. I feel like there was a lot of mistakes that I made um, that could have prevented that play from even being that big or causing the game. Um, so, yeah, you you can look at one play and say, oh, that was like – I, that, that killed us or that hurt us, but we should have done a better job. I should have done a better job of making sure we didn't leave the game up to chance like that and leave the game up to one bad call going our way and that deciding it. So, yeah, maybe that was a tough call for us, but I feel like I could have done a better job preventing that from even happening. And Gino, what did you make of the illegal screen call there at the end? Um, I mean, there's probably an illegal screen call, um, yeah, you could make on every single possession. I just know there were three or four of them called on us and I don't think there were any called on them. Sure. So I guess we just got to get better at not setting illegal screens. <laughs> Little Lindsay. Yeah, to get better. Gino, Gino, to follow up on that, Coach Yo from Old Miss, right after the game, tweeted, you know, that they call moving screen a lot on the screen, rescreen action. And she said, I think Gino screamed because he wished he could have that playback. And I wondered, was Who that, said that Coach Yo at Old Miss? And I just wondered if, or was were you reacting because you didn't like the call, or did you think that you should have run something different? I don't remember. <laughs> he like who said that bullshit? <laughs> who who said that? <laughs> coach over, old man. He was he gonna cuss that coach out. He screamed because he wanted that play back. Nah, that's not why he was screaming. He was screaming because that play he got robbed though. Look, everybody know what time it is, man. Why are we making such a big mess out here? And we know what it is. Let's see if ESPN is going to talk about it. 
let's see who's going to be the one to tell you, hey, man, uh, they got ripped off. And they ain't getting carried. So who's going to be brave enough to step up and admit what actually happened? I will have the ball turned it over. And in transition, I think that UConn shouldn't have called the timeout. I think they should have ran the play with 10 seconds to go in the game, down one. Don't call the timeout, just run the play. But they wanted to run a design play. And they go straight inside. And I knew exactly where this play was going. I knew how this play was going to be designed. And everybody thought Paige was going to shoot the ball. Page wasn't going to shoot. This was the decoy. Page is coming off the screen. She gets the ball. And she was getting ready to get into position. Right? Here she comes. She was wide open at the three. She cuts back. And the screen is already going to be set. She doesn't extend. That girl just runs into a brick wall. Paige rolls out. And the ball was going to go back to Edwards. She was going to go double. Edwards was going to roll to the basket. With four seconds to go on the clock, she got the ball. Edwards going to roll towards the basket. And it was going to be Edwards against this. No, that wasn't. She wasn't going to have any chance at stopping Edwards. Edwards is either going to have to be fouled or what have you. But Edwards is going to score this basketball. So it would have been pressure on Iowa to have to come up with something down the stretch. But they make a call on Edwards to put all this pressure on this black woman right here to make her the fall guy of the whole thing. They can't believe what they just called. It's unbelievable. Here it is in real time. She's in position. She got her arms up. She does not extend. The girl Marshall runs right into her. Look, she's right there doing her thing. She gets the ball. And Marshall makes the call, right? You see that? Well, she didn't make the call. I was celebrating as they just got bailed out. What an egregious, an egregious call. Uh, who's to say they're going to score, right? But they decided, the NCAA decided not to find out. They decided we don't even want to know what would happen. We don't want to. So in that case, um, that's where that we are right now, you know? So it is what it is. So yeah, man, I'm just tired right now, wore down. Watching all these games, making these videos, getting me dizzy as hell. So I'm going to take another nap. want to say shouts out to Kwame Brown, Ticket TV, The Dreamers Pro. Uh, I want to say shouts out to um, 
Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Um, welcome to HDII TV. All these guys, man, who's doing it the right way, the Star Report. And yeah, that's it, man. I'm tired. Thank y'all who went to my Patreon, the Carcino for Life Patreon. Appreciate that. Yes, the murder of Prodigy from Mob Deep is on. Uh, I put that one on the top video because somebody asked me to pin that up there because they missed that. I did it like four years ago and they never saw it. So they seen it now and they shocked and amazed because they can't believe they missed it. So, yeah, so much stuff on the Patreon. That's what I'm saying. It's thousands. We're in the thousands now. So it's a lot of material. Holding it down, keeping them fat. I'm out. And you let me know, are they carrying Caitlin Clark? Or is Iowa really this good? You let me know in the comment section. I'm out.